All right, so getting into some of the outreach as we move into the month of March. So we're going to take the approach, just for example's sake, of selling to blue-collar service-based businesses, but this is going to work regardless of who you're trying to work with. If you are working with a uh, – we can even change this to – instead of blue-collar, we can change this to uh, local service-based businesses, right? <clears throat> so when we're trying to work with these individuals – we have to make sure that we're taking an approach that makes sense because you are going to speak a different language compared to what language they speak, right? So if you are in the digital marketing space, you speak language A. If you are dealing with somebody who is not in that space, they speak language B. So we have to essentially understand a few things, right? Number one, you have to understand how to create awareness as to what you're doing and explain what it is that you are doing. Then you have to create interest in what you're doing, then you have to kind of uh, elicit some some sort of desire for them to want what you're doing. And then you have to essentially captivate that desire and basically direct them to take action, right? So this is like a basic ADA framework. You can get into so many different frameworks and you can get like really, really technical, really, really quickly. And, you know, people will argue all day long, like there's ADA, there's a AIDCA, there's IDCA, like there's so many different uh, parts of the, or there's so many different ways really to approach this, right? But at the end of the day, they need to essentially know what you're doing, be interested in what you're doing, and then want to partake in what you're doing. That's essentially all we have to focus, right? So the ways that we're going to approach that, they're all going to pivot, they're all going to change, they're all going to alter, um, it really doesn't matter. And again, if you guys have been in this community for more than a day, you know that I want to make sure that you understand the psychology behind what it is we're doing, right? If you understand the psychology of what we're doing, then you will be able to essentially replicate this or pivot or adapt as your per previous or current method uh, becomes outdated, right? So that's that's basically the focus of what it is that you're trying to do, right? So we're, we're going to be getting into, I know earlier we, we mentioned covering like selling social media. Uh, I don't see too much of a demand for that. So we'll just go ahead and jump into like an early preview of what we'll cover in March, which is basically the outbound scripts, right? So before we get into the outbound scripts, this is only going to work. I cannot stress this enough. This is only going to work if you have content on your page, Okay. With your content, I'm going to give you a quick like 20, 30 second rundown. With your content, you need to have short form and long form. You need to use every medium on that platform. So if you're using Instagram, you need to use every medium. So posts, reels, IGTV, stories, right? And with stories, polls and, and questionnaires and sliders and all those different things, you need to use all of that. If you're using Facebook, then you need to use every medium on Facebook. If you're using whatever platform it is that you're using, you have to use every medium because that's going to not only help with the algorithm, which we really could care less about the algorithm, but it's also going to help with your audience because they're going to resonate more with that content if they are able to see what it is they're looking for, right? So for example, I am not a big fan of stories. However, stories are a high converting feature. And I'll notice that the same people that use stories don't use uh, you know, other forms of content. So understand the platform. Whatever platform you're in or, or on, you're using every medium. You're using problem agitating content. You want to have minimum, minimum, I would say six to nine posts. So you kind of fill up your grid, right? This is TikTok and uh, Instagram specific. But you want to have content on there. Don't be a ghost. And then, then you can start your outreach, okay? And that's what we're going to cover a little bit today. But if you do not have content on that page and you do outreach, two things are going to happen. Number one. No one is going to trust you because you're going to be a random page with no content. So how can they validate or verify you are who you say you are, right? If you don't have content, then you may as well just go cold call, cold email, run ads as a beginner because you have nothing saying, I know what I'm saying, right? Number two, the entire focus of what we're doing with the outreach is to build a relationship. We build a relationship in one of two ways, paid as in a working one-on-one -on -one relationship or organic, which is basically where they are consuming your content and they are able to be retargeted by your content. So if you do not have content to then say, hey, follow me in exchange for content, then why would they follow you? The process breaks down, right? So this is kind of like where you have to relinquish a little bit of like what you've been doing in the past. If it's not working, if you're in this community for the reasons of I want to make this work better, more efficiently in less time, then that's kind of the mindset that you have to slowly adapt to, right? 
uh, faster the better, but at least slowly adapt to, right? So getting into, and I don't want to cover the content too much because that's what we covered all of you know the rest of February, but getting into the actual outreach, what you're going to see is this outreach is going to work significantly better with the content, right? And so just to give you context, you have people in the community like Grant who didn't do content for a while. Then he started doing it late December. Then at the end of December, he started doing his outreach. Then in early January, he messaged me and says, I sent out 20 messages, five people opened them. Of the five people that opened them, all five hopped on a meeting with me or they scheduled a meeting with me. Then he posts later this, or it's like yesterday or the day before. He says, last week I got three more leads or three more clients. And then I also have three more leads, right? And so he's doing it. He's doing it pretty down you the got middle. This again. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah, man. What's that? Oh, sorry, man. I have the mic on. Sorry, so. Oh no, you got I was you... talking with my with my wife. Uh, sorry for. No, you got. I thought you were talking to me. No, um. So yeah, so you got Grant, who's basically like he's using the process pretty pretty strictly, right? And it's working out. And then you've got someone like Ismail, who I just posted his case study on YouTube. He went from zero to four K. All he was doing for his outreach was he would just go, he would use Facebook primarily. He would send friend requests. They would friend him back. And then when they friended him back, he would repost his business content on his personal content and they would see the content that way. So when you're doing the outreach, the goal is relationship. Okay. That's the first thing that we need to understand. The, the, the very first thing that we need to understand, I'll move this over here is that the goal of outreach is to establish relationship. It is not to close a sale. If you go in there with the intention of closing a sale with your outreach, you're going to mess up. So number one, the goal of outreach is to initiate a relationship, okay? That is the goal of outreach. If you are doing, or if you're taking any other approach when it comes to this, you are not only going to do it wrong, but when it comes to the gray area or the gray matter, you are going to mess it up. Here's what I mean by that. I could give you a thousand scenarios to, to prepare for. It will never cover every scenario. I could give you 10,000 scenarios. It will never cover every scenario in business. It won't. It's just not possible because humans are humans, right? We cannot predict human behavior. Even the people who study human behavior in economics and psychology uh, and, and philosophy and all these different areas of study as, as far as, you know, the physical and, and societal behavior all the way down to the individual thought process, there's very little prediction that is 100% accurate, right? So I cannot give you that. So this is where understanding the underlying goal is going to dictate all of those weird scenarios that you cannot prepare for. Because if I give you a weird scenario or a weird response, you have essentially two routes to take. You have how do I close this individual, which is the wrong mindset? And then you have, how do I initiate a relationship with an individual? That initiating a relationship will lead to money down the road every single time. If you try to close, it's not going to lead to money. You might get some money. I'm not saying you won't, but it's not going to lead to, to you know, a, a healthy amount of money or, or a sturdy amount of money, a stable amount of money, right? So it's like the same analogy if you're going to, um, if, if we're looking at dating, right? If you're, if you're, intention is you want to take somebody to bed, right? I'm being very vulgar, but I'm talking to, from like the male perspective of how most men are. If your goal is you want to take somebody to bed, if you go in there with that intention, the odds of it happening are pretty low. But if the intention now becomes how to have a relationship with them, the fruit of that relationship becomes, you know, physical intimacy, right? Again, I'm trying to speak the male language here because usually when I speak to women, they understand this concept very, very quickly. When I speak to men, I usually have to paint out this analogy. So Hopefully that makes sense. So again, the focus of outreach is to initiate a relationship. Now, when we are initiating a relationship, what you're trying to do is you are trying to get your foot in the door for that relationship. So we need to then examine the priorities and the offers we have. So let's look at the offers, right? The main focus should be getting them to follow your socials again this does not work if you are not using social media properly and again if you go look at ismail's content who is doing a phenomenal job he does not have too many posts he, do, he does a good amount but all of his posts are the exact things that i tell him to put in the stories they are testimonials 
client proof, and then calls to action. That's it. That's all he's doing. And now he's just now getting into TikTok where he's putting up clips from his client interviews and that's getting attention too. But to from him for him to go from zero to 5,200 in monthly recurring revenue, all he did was friend requests, very minimal posts, and he was going hard on his stories, very aggressively on his stories, right? All you have to do for a story is screenshot, photo, post, caption, that's it. Stories are so informal and they have such a short half-life that you really don't have to put too much thought into them, right? They can be, I mean, look at my stories that I posted today. Talk to the video for like 30 seconds, talk to the camera for 30 seconds, and then posted a screenshot of the YouTube video and gave a quick rundown, right? <clears throat> very, very informal. Go look at, again, look, I'm using Ismail as an example because he did all this with zero DM outreach. It was just friend request outreach, right? So the main focus, and I, I, I can even change this. The end goal of that conversation should be at a minimum, let's say that, getting them to follow your socials, right? That's at a minimum. That's what we call the, the ultimate downsell. So I'll put that in parentheses. The ultimate downsell. How, or downfall, that's funny, downsell. So how do we get them? I'm working backwards through the conversation because again, what is the main focus? The main focus is to initiate a relationship. So that's why I'm working backwards in the conversation and then we'll go forwards through it. And then I'll see what uh, situations you guys have seen and try to give you some, some objection handling, right? So the end goal should be at a minimum, getting them to follow your socials, the ultimate downsell. So what does the ultimate downsell look like? If the client or let's say lead rejects you, offer to make content in exchange for a follow. What this is gonna do, we talked about this a little bit last time. They're going to tell you exactly what people within their niche, because we're niche down, right? That's step one. We're this Right now we're covering step four. So step one, you're niching down. And step three, you're, you're, well, even step two, your funnel is around, your digital presence is around that niche. Step three, your content is around solving problems within that niche. Step four, you're doing outreach to people within that niche, right? So everything is niche down, right? Uh, and I think everybody here is niche down from what I understand. So again, if the lead rejects you, what you're going to do is you're going to offer to make content in exchange for a follow. And the way you do that is you say verbatim, if just like, hey, completely understand if you don't want to work with me, if you would like, or if you're comfortable, if you share any problem you're having in your business that I could fix tomorrow, I will make a piece of content just for you. If you want to go ahead and give me a follow, if you follow me, I'll make the content for you, right? Just give me a single problem you're having. So you're not asking for anything that's paid. You're asking for them to spend 15 more seconds typing up an issue they're having. And then they, and then you tell them, cool, give me a follow if they're not already following you. And then if they give you the problem, you can actually further investigate it because now they've given you the problem. And we already know the first thing we want to do when we're doing our outreach is agitate a problem. So if we know the exact problem they're having, then we can agitate that, right? So again, end goal, they flat out reject you. Again, I'm preparing you for the worst. They flat out reject you. You say, hey, if you're okay with it, give me one problem. Or, hey, I got a challenge for you real quick. So some kind of hook, whatever. Whatever you feel sounds normal coming out of your mouth. Give me one problem you're having in your business that you would love if I could fix overnight. What I'll do for you is I would, I'll make you a piece of content or I'll make you a video, I'll make you a post, whatever, showing you exactly how to fix that. In exchange, all I ask is that you just follow my account. If they follow you, great. You can retarget them. If they don't follow you, great. You still have the problem within the niche that might resonate with other people. And we covered this a little bit in the last call, right? If I said, what's the biggest problem you're having right now? If you're like, well, how do I generate leads for my HVAC business? That's going to, and let's say you don't follow me, that's going to resonate with everybody in that space, right? And so I'm, I'm trying to keep it as general as possible. Obviously, the focus is what and how to sell to local service-based businesses, but this applies with digital agencies, right? This, this is something that um I, I do to this day for Seso University specifically, where someone goes, uh, you know, oh yeah, this is what's going on, blah, blah, I love this piece of content. I go, great, what's going on in your business? Try to solve it. They don't answer. I go, okay, no worries. If you want, if you follow me, I'll give you a free piece of content or I'll make content just for you. And let's say they mention a problem that you already have because you've been making content every week, like we covered during the month of February, then you go, oh, I already have that for you. You send it over to them after they follow you. Does that answer your question? No? Here, I'll go more in depth. Or I have a piece of content, but let me make another one more in depth, right? Short form social media, any social media content, you can make multiple pieces of, right? And again, I don't want to focus on that too much, but you can remake content all the time. 
So again, the the lead offers or the lead rejects you. You offer to make content in exchange for the follow. Right. This is the ultimate downsell. That's going to build your socials, which means when you go to reach out to somebody, let's say you do this for like three months. After three months of getting rejected, let's say you're just absolutely terrible. Your DM sucks. You're terrible in the DMs, whatever. You're still a mask an audience, right? Now your videos are getting more views. Your content's getting more engagement and your following is increasing. So then you go to reach out to someone. They're like, wow, this guy reached out to me. He's got 500, 1,000, 2,000 followers. He's got case studies and he's got results, right? That's going to increase weight. That's where social media acts like a black hole. What do I mean by that? As it gains weight, it attracts mass. The mass comes in, gains weight, it attracts mass. The process repeats. Your social media starting out, it doesn't have any weight to it. So it's not going to attract many people, right? Think about when somebody sits in the middle of a trampoline and they're really heavy. Everybody on the outside starts rolling in, right? It's almost hard not to bounce towards them because everything is now angled towards that really heavy mass in the middle of the trampoline. As that gets heavier, it's going to be harder and harder to stay away from that center, right? If you're looking at a trampoline, that's exactly how a black hole operates. As, it, as that person weighs down the trampoline and people start falling to the middle, more mass is in the middle. And so more people start falling in the middle, right? Until the trampoline eventually touches the bottom or tears, you know, whatever it is. But black holes will just continuously do that until they collapse. So social media acts like a black hole. This is why the ultimate downsell is so important and so pivotal. It's things that people aren't really doing because... Number one, it acts like a black hole. So as you gain followers, it attracts more followers, which gains more followers and it snowballs. But what does this tie back to? The end goal of outreach is to initiate a relationship. And again, if this is not your main goal, then what's going to happen when you get rejected? You're not going to do step three. You're not going to do, and you're not going to do step three, which means step four is not going to work. Right. And again, Go look at Ismail, go look at Grant, go look at myself. I hate using myself as a case study because people like, I hear it all the time, like, well, like, oh, you're at that level, right? So why should I listen to you? Go look at people who are your peers who are advancing rapidly right now because they're doing this. <clears throat> yeah, Star, what's up? I don't want to interrupt the training. Are you? No, you're good. Okay. So, because you go a lot in detail. So sometimes I get, I start getting a little overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. So, I understand. Okay. Friend requesting. Um, we then are creating content that they can see as well, but that introductory message. And That's I also, yeah, I'm getting to that. So I'm working backwards. Oh, to, okay. To, okay. Yeah. I thought I missed something. Cause I was no, no, you're good. Remember you were saying like, you know, to provide the piece of content based on their needs, but that's where I got confused. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm working, the reason I'm working backwards, and again, I know you know this, just based because you've built so many communities and relationships with people, but a lot of people uh, who might watch the call later, they don't understand this first line, right? So mm -hmm. you understand the relationship aspect, but a lot of other people don't. So that's where I'm going in this order. And basically saying that this needs to be the, the main focus of what they're doing, right? Yes. So, uh, what what will usually happen is I'll say, here's how to go into outreach. And people go, oh, outreach, the goal is to close, right? So I have to change those presuppositions. Otherwise, they'll take the wrong approach. Their scripting will be off. Everything falls apart. But uh, yeah, so yeah, that, I'm definitely, that's where I'm going right now. So I'm okay, glad you- Okay, no that's rush. Just, no, you're like, good. That's a, that's a perfect question. You. That's a perfect question. Because now that segues into how do we initiate, right? So the question becomes, how do we- initiate right so again i'm going to use a dating analogy because i think when it comes to business relationships or relationships in general it, dating is going to be a really easy analogy that a lot of us understand and even if you're not great at dating it's a great analogy because maybe in clarifying this you'll understand maybe why you're um, not so great at dating or <laughs> talking to people right and i'm not a, i'm not a dating coach by any means but uh, it's just an analogy i found that works really really well so looking at this uh, process, right? How do we initiate? So there's a few ways that we need to, that we can initiate. But before we get into the actual ways to initiate, again, let's understand the psychology behind it. And that is basically asking the question, why would anybody speak to us? And the easiest way to answer that is why do you speak to people? 
And the easiest way to answer that is who was the last person you spoke to that maybe was selling something or maybe was somebody in your space that you admired. Uh, and I'm not trying to, you know, pat myself on the back, but maybe like example, why did you speak to me? Right. It, let, let's look at that as an example. Why did you speak to me? Right. It probably wasn't because of my, you know, receding hairline and monotone voice. It was probably, there's probably something in there that you were like, okay, I'm kind of registering with that. Now I want to uh, reach out. Right. And so, Star said in the comments, content. And that's exactly why step three, content creation, comes before step four. So that is a way that we can initiate. So if we say uh content, this is what's this is what's really interesting. And I'm I'm glad you um I'm glad you said that. So let's look at this. Content. Content would not have worked for somebody like Star, perhaps, if this was not my focus and if this wasn't a methodology right and so i'm not sure exactly how star found me maybe you can shed some light but i'm i'm assuming if it wasn't through a dm it if it probably was through you seeing some content in a group engagement and then maybe i shared a video and then maybe from there you went down that path is that okay yeah she said exactly right so content right so content can go to not only your audience group than youtube video exactly content can go to your audience but it can also go to uh basically attention right so this is where facebook comes into play and we're going to cover how different social media platforms will change the way you do your outreach but if we're looking at specifically facebook uh well let's back up even a little bit we have to play to the strengths of the content uh platforms right so facebook is going to be great for what i'm probably not going to go viral on facebook it's not the point of Facebook. What is what is the strength of Facebook? It's it's communities. So if your community, if you if your industry has a strong community on Facebook, then operate there. And so if you're like cool, my community, my a lot of people in my industry are on Facebook. Where on Facebook? What medium? Right. That's what we talked about earlier. For me, high level people are in high level communities, and there's multiple of them. Great. So that makes sense for me to be on Facebook. If you are more in like, um, let's say auto detailing is a great example of an industry that is very Instagram favored because they can do really cool car shoots, right? So then I need to be on Instagram. Well, if I'm on Instagram, does Instagram have communities? No. So now I need to do the follow for follow where you're basically just engaging with people. Your profile needs to be fully optimized, having those nine grids of content that's really nice and branded and it's all within the industry, the bio that's all optimized to the industry saying, here's what I do and pushing to the YouTube. Then people are going to go, oh, cool. I'm an auto detailer. This guy grows auto detailers and he has a bunch of free content that I can learn from without paying him. Because that's, you remember, that's the thought process, right? The thought process is how can I get without giving? That's how 99% of people are, myself included. I hate, hate, hate spending money. So how can I get without giving? Now, I give in value, but I'm talking monetarily. How can I get value without giving money, right? That becomes a mindset. So you need to play to that. And you need to say, how do I give so much value that when they're ready to spend money, they come to me, right? So we, we can even... Uh, we can even put that in here for the value. Let me erase some of this uh, unnecessary stuff. So buyers want to get value without giving money. So you need to give such good value that when they want or when they're ready, they come to you. That is the mentality when it comes to content creation. And again, I don't want to focus too much on that because that's kind of, you know, been the focus of our previous content, but that's essentially what it is. Buyers want to give, or they want to get value without giving money. So you need to be so good at giving great value that they, when they're ready, will give you their money. That's where the seven hour rule comes in. That's where the seven touch points come in. These are all statistics that they've been studying for years that all point to how can we foster a relationship? This is where social media comes into play because social media is you being social, right? So again, the question becomes, how do we initiate? So you can do content to an audience or attention. So this doesn't have to be your audience. It just has to be where your industry's attention is. So again, for me, high level communities, there's attention. I can go there and I can leverage other people's audience. Instagram, 
I can't do that. So I need to create my own audience. And that's going to be follow for follow, interest-based stuff. TikTok, it's strictly interest-based stuff. So I can't focus, uh, I don't want to focus too much on my audience, but I want to focus more so on the, um, or I want to focus specifically on the interest of my audience because that's what plays to the advantage of TikTok, right? YouTube is more evergreen like search results. Same thing with SEO blogs. So I want to make those as, as uh, visible as possible. And that's where SEO comes into play because I need to understand what they're searching for. So again, I'm not focusing too much on content. I'm, I'm just touching on that because to, to basically show how it correlates to, um, to what we're doing with the outreach, right? So the next thing that we're going to do is how do we initiate? Well, we can do uh, content. So basically it's content to audience. We can do a uh, group engagement, which when you're doing group engagement, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you are continuing value. So again, if we're looking at a dating analogy, it would be really awkward if you walked up to, again, I'm taking this from my perspective. If me as a man, if I as a man walked up to a group of women and they were all laughing and I'm like, ha ha ha, that's crazy. Who wants to go home with me? They'd be like, what the heck? Right? So imagine if you're in a business setting and everyone's talking about value or they're asking questions that have nothing to do with hiring you and you come up and you're like, that's crazy. I could do this for you for X amount of money. It's a, it's a very awkward shift in the conversation. It's very cringy, right? If you did that in person, just like the dating analogy, it would not be well received. So what you need to do instead is you need to take that conversation and you need to guide it into goal number one, right? Everything's going to tie back to goal number one, initiating a relationship. When you initiate that relationship without pitching, people will be drawn to you because they're going to see you're not desperate. And this is, this is all done on what I would say is a uh, subconscious level. But the minute that you consciously bring up working together is the minute you push them away. You want them to subconsciously go down the path of that's good value. He's not pushing a sale. She's not pushing a sale. There's more good value. They're answering all the questions I have. Hey, what would it look like if we work together? And then they initiate it, right? And so what seems like a natural organic interaction falls right into the path you want to take it because your focus was this and not close the client. This is why you have to understand the psychology of doing this outreach and engagement because, again, if you go in there with trying to close, everyone's going to see you as someone who's trying to close 24-7, right? Nobody, nobody wants to get with the womanizer. But if you go into that relationship, every interaction as how do I initiate a positive relationship, whether that person buys with you or doesn't buy with you, maybe recommends you to somebody else or doesn't do anything, they just follow you, again, we're brought back to point four. Social media acts like a black hole. So you see how this whole process is intertwined. So it logically makes as much sense as possible. So again, we have content to an audience or attention. And another way, by the way, that you can leverage somebody else's audience is if you go live with them or if you have somebody on like a podcast or if you have somebody and you guys go live together, your audience follows them, their audience follows you. So it's going to be really advantageous if you if you go uh, have like these live sessions with somebody who is uh, in your industry or somebody who has a bigger audience than you. Now, how do you get that to happen? Again, that's going to be where you have a relationship and you provide value. And you're like, and they, you're like, oh, we could have you up on your podcast, you know, yada, yada, yada. Or, hey, I could come on your podcast 100% free. You know, I don't know if you pay guests or anything, but I do it for 100% free, whatever. I could promote you, right? That's where just having a conversation takes place. So the third aspect we have is, uh, oh, and group engagement, by the way, is replying to comments or replying to posts. It's not you going to uh, people's posts and dropping a bunch of value. You can do that. I have... I have not seen very many people do it well. So I call those value bombs. So uh, I'd say I'll put here uh, value bombs might not go off the way you want, right? So value bombs are basically where, and you guys, maybe a few of you have seen this where I'll go into like other people's uh, high level communities and I'll be like, hey, I see a lot of people asking this kind of question. You know, here's what I found in my experience you know, value, 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 value. I don't want to spam, you know, I don't want to put too much content here. I don't want to like basically bore you to death. So if you want more, I'll put a YouTube video. And then what does a YouTube video do? It of course sells for me at the very end, the last like, you know, you know, 30 to 60 seconds sells for me. And the rest is just pure value. So value bombs usually don't go off the way people want because they'll say something like, Hey, who wants a free X, Y, Z? And everyone's like, scammer, loser, right? And they're like, hey, I can help. Who, who would be interested? This is one you guys have heard all the time. Who'd be interested in like 30 more clients? And they're like, get out of here, right? Uh, so it, it, it's, like I said, value bombs might not go off the way you want. So be very careful uh, setting them off, right? 
Uh, but group engagement in general is just replying to comments and, and replies, right? It's it's adding value to the conversation. Um, there is a way that you can do va uh, group engagement that is, again, another very risky way. And this is called the um, antithetical positioning. So you guys have heard me talk about antithetical claims where you basically opposite the market and better and why your way is better. Antithetical positioning um, is basically a very aggressive way of, of bringing immediate attention to yourself. Um, so for example, if somebody says, I like cold calling, you immediately come in there and you're like, cold calling sucks. Don't ever do cold calling, do this instead, right? Immediately, you're going to bump heads with the original post. And because you're taking such a polarizing position, you will garner attention. Uh, you can take the position of, you know, no such thing as bad attention. Um, it's definitely a riskier play. I'm not saying you should do that, but it's a way where you can immediately take attention off of somebody or take some of their attention away from them. Again, the reason I don't promote this is because people do it the wrong way and it rubs somebody the wrong way. It's also, it can hurt, it can hurt your brand if that's not what your brand is. And as you guys know, with antithetical positioning in the market, you're opposing a set of ideals. So I say, Hey, I don't like cold calling. I'm not saying, Hey, you suck at cold calling. I hate your cold calling method, right? So when you do antithetical positioning in group engagement, usually you are going very, very opposite of a specific individual's post or opinion, and that can, can rub people the wrong way. So that's just where I want to give you guys a little clarity. These are two things that have worked very, very well, but they are very, very risky. So value bombs, I do very well. And then antithetical positioning, I've had a mentor who I helped uh, with an antithetical post. So I basically explained him the process. He went and did it. Now he's a very strong copywriter and he made $4,000 in a single Thursday evening. And I have his testimonial on YouTube, but um, he was like, he basically came in and somebody was saying something like, do this, do this. And he's like, no, nah, that's stupid. Do this instead. And it caused like a huge feed. Like it had like 98 or 198 comments. It was something crazy, but he had so much traction off that, that people came to his funnel and he closed about 4k of deals um, on his low ticket offer. So that was pretty cool. But again, these two I would not recommend to the uh, beginner or intermediate. Those are definitely two very, very advanced methods. And it, it sounds silly me saying like advanced methods, but again, if you do it the wrong way, it, it can hurt your online reputation. So moving on, we have content, we have group engagement, and then we have, um, we can say, I would say DMs. I would say DMs, you know, we could, we could discuss like friend result, you know, friending. So we'll do friending after this, but with DMs, actually let's do friending first because friending is, is as simple as it sounds and DMs can get complicated. So we can do friending, right? So when you're friending, you need to make sure that your profile is optimized. If your profile is not optimized, then people are going to look at it and be like, who is this person right now? When I say optimized, I am not telling you to. I don't want you to put like, for example, I see people who are like friend request me. And the first thing I would do is I'll click on their profile and their profile will be like, we scale digital agencies. Are you ready for, th for 300 more leads this month? I'm like, immediately I'm like declining the friend request because all I know that's going to happen is I'm going to accept it. They're going to DM me and it's going to be some cringy opener. And somebody did this to me today. I'm not going to read their name, but I'll read the exact um, conversation they try to hit me with. So he sends me a friend request and I've seen him in a few groups. And then he, uh, this is what he says. He goes, uh, number one, I don't know why you, you guys tell me how you feel about this. I cannot stand when people use my name in, in a message. Like, so he messaged me he's like, Hey Alec, how's Monday going? I've never met this man before. I don't know why it drives me up a wall. I don't know if I'm like sounding like a crazy person, but it, it kills me when people say, uh, my name in, in a, uh, in an outbound message that I've never met before. Do you guys uh do you guys get any of those? Star, I would assume you get like a thousand. Yeah, I do get some. Do you how how do you feel about that? Abraham, were you gonna say something? I mean, I feel like it's copy and paste if they don't use your name. So I actually teach yeah. them to use the name, but I would say more so the voice memos use the name because we know that you've recorded it. I like the voice memo idea. I don't know why when somebody puts it in text, I don't know why it draws me up a wall. But now, yes, yeah, Steven said he gets some, but he doesn't think about it. Yeah, I think this is just, I think this is a weird pet peeve that I have. I don't know why. Like if one of you guys messaged me and you're like, hey, Alec, like, like, I'd be like, cool. Like I have some kind of a you know professional relationship with you guys. I don't know why the cold calling with my name or cold messaging with my name. In, I don't know why. 
I don't know why. Maybe I got to see a business therapist. But uh, it's normal. If somebody give you my for my name, it's normal. The only thing I will respond right away. What do you want? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I like that. So he's like, "How's Monday going?" And that to me, that seems like, again, the the way that the way that I approach sales, and this is a good thing for you. Like, understand who your avatar is, right? This is step one, module one B. Understanding your module, your um, avatar, right? The reverse market trident. Understand the avatar goes a very long way. So for me, I understand like I, I want to like Abraham said, I kind of want to get to the point very quickly because and I don't want to appear as a customer, which I'll show you this individual messes up. So I want to get to the point very quickly and I don't want to appear as a customer because that just that rubs people the wrong way. Right. If you message somebody and they're like, oh, you know, um, you know, uh, hey, well, I'll tell you what he said. So he basically says like, hey, how's it going? Number one, we, we have no relationship together. So, you know, I understand he's trying to be courteous but for me i've gotten so many of these dms that i already know where it's going. like abraham said i already know where it's going a mile away right and then he goes do you guys offer you know blah 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 services and i'm like very very short with this individual i'm like depends on industry because i already know where this is going he's positioning himself as a client and he's going to turn around and then try to sell me something and there's nothing that pisses off a business owner more than that right if you're doing cold calling, call somebody up and be like, do you offer this service? And they're like, yeah. And then go, what if I could help you? It's like, they just went from, I think I'm going to make money to now you're trying to take my money. Right. So then he's like, oh, what industry do you work in? And then he goes, I answer. And then he goes, thought so. Here's why I'm connecting. We're scouting for three agencies to install an in-house AI outbound acquisition. So within a few messages, he's already telling me what he can give me. Right. So he asks me two questions and then he thinks that that's enough information to try to close me right away. Right. So then the follow-up question is the worst question in the history of mankind. Tell me if you have not reached that, heard this message before where they go, do you have the capacity to take on more leads? Has anybody heard that one before? Can you handle I, more leads? I hate that one. <laughs> and what's funny is I was talking to Grant about me too, this. That, yeah. What were you today saying? Today I received like three of those. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was talking to Grant about this and he's like, um, so the reason uh, Grant, Grant, I'm helping Grant with his like messaging. And um, so Grant, uh, I'm talking to Grant about it. And he actually sends me a screenshot from somebody hitting him the same thing. And let me see if I can find the message they hit him with. But we were talking about like, it just shows a complete lack of uh, either A, experience or common sense, right? Either you haven't sent enough messages to know what's working or not, or B, you're sending these messages and it's not getting through your thick head that they're not working, right? So he gets one and you guys remember this in the training I have in, um, in module four, the exact scripts to use. I show you guys the DMS that, I, that don't work where somebody's like, Oh, sorry, I barged into your DMS. Right. And then this person messages him and goes, look, Grant, I know I seem like a jerk for crashing your DM, but what if this could add a little bit of value? Would you still block me or have 30 seconds left? Guess what he did block him. Like it, the screenshot he sent me, he didn't even, he didn't even respond yet. So the bottom says block or delete. So it just goes to show you like, it's uh and usually when people message me like that what i'll do is i'll actually try to flip it back on them and i'll be like oh are you a setter and they'll be like yeah and i'm like dude why don't you just start your own business and then i'll try to pull them into high level <laughs> but the fact of the matter is like they're going into it very very inexperienced because what is their intention is their intention to build a relationship with me or is their intention to close me it's to close me right so right away again take this position from a uh, dating position, right? From a romantic position. If you are in the dating field and somebody comes up to speak to you and their sole intention is to get something from you, whether it's a, uh, they're trying to take you to bed right away. They're trying to get a free meal out of you. They're trying to, they're trying to gold dig you, take your money. Cause uh, you know, your, your coaching business went crazy. Your agency went crazy. Right. And th this is, it doesn't matter what gender, male, female, everything in between does not matter what gender, right? If somebody is coming to you and they're trying to get something out of you and you can see that intention, do you feel like you want to foster that relationship? No, the answer is no, right? Because it's not an authentic relationship. Same thing goes in business. And so what's interesting is these people say like, oh, what if I could help add value? What if, well, I could add so many leads in your DM. You are not, you don't care about the relationship. What you're caring about is pushing your offer. So again, this is why if you guys take nothing from this conversation, the goal of outreach is to initiate a relationship. You don't do that by telling people things. You do that by asking people things. Who is Who here has been on a date if you're comfortable sharing? Uh, and usually every time I ask this question, usually every woman always ha has their hand raised. 
Maybe the men do too, but usually it's everyone because usually it's a man thing. Who has been on a date where the partner you're speaking to talks nonstop about themselves and doesn't ask you about yourself? Has anybody been on a date like that? You can just raise your hand on the uh, little Zoom emoji thing. Yeah. And like I said, I, how'd, I, how'd I know if Star was going to raise her hand, right? It's always the same. It's always the, and this is something that like a lot of the guys sometimes they don't realize and they got to open their eyes to it. But if you want to build a relationship, you go on a date and you ask them about them 24 seven. If you want to know a date is going well, you, you make it about them so much so that at one point they stop and they go, well, wait a minute, I don't know anything about you. And then they start pulling information out of you and you just answer and, and all of a sudden it goes well. So there you go. Guys, if you need a, a tip for your first date, make it all about the other person and then let them turn around and say, I don't know anything about you and watch how well your first date goes. So friending profile needs to be optimized. So it basically needs to look, you don't want to be screaming, uh, you know, I, I don't, uh, I'm trying to take your money. You want to be screaming, you know, I'm here to build value. So I'm not saying you need to hide what you're doing, but you need to, your, your offer and your description should not be the same message I get. Your offer should not be, we do this and we make you a bunch of money and then your DM is the exact same thing, right? And then let's see, somebody said in the comments, what I found spectacular is that the vast majority of these types of sellers do not take the time to research the person to determine what service they really need and say that I find it spectacular because I prefer that they don't do it, making it easier for those to do. Yeah, and I agree with that. What I'll say at the on the other hand, right, and we talk about... um. Uh, I talked about last week's call where it's like you want to date the lead, right? So don't, you know, sexually harass them, but you want to like date the lead. It's ex exactly what Abraham said. You want to get to know them. Now you can do your research on their social media profile, but you need to make sure that's not creepy. It'd be very weird if I was like, Hey, Steven, and we don't know each other. Hey, Steven, I saw you took your family to this vacation spot. That's really cool. I love it there. Steven's going to be like, all right. No, that is crazy. Alex. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something right. like that. It's just I, more. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen people do it because they they mess it up because they're trying, they're forcing it so much. So instead, what I like to do, it, let's say you're not right, exactly creepy. I had somebody when um when my daughter was born, they were like, "Oh, I just saw you became a dad. Like that's really cool. I see babies." Blah blah. blah. I'm like, "All right, it was it was a little creepy, but the intention was nice, but it, it comes off very creepy, right?" So what you do instead? Here's here's my advice. When you are, um, when you are doing your DMs, so we can just go go ahead and hop into DMs. When you're going to DMs, you want to uh, establish that relationship. So you want to start with a problem agitation, and then you want to get into digging uh, deeper. When you're digging deeper, when you're doing what we call discovery, that's where, uh, and we'll get into problem agitation, but that's where when you're digging deeper, that's where you want to know what's going on in the profile. Let that direct your questions. So if you know that Steven went on vacation somewhere, don't say, Hey, Steven, I saw you went on vacation. Because Steven's going to be like, all right, get out of here. Block this creep, right? But if I'm like, oh, yeah, we just went on vacation. You know, this is where we went. What about you? You've been on vacation recently? I know to ask that question because I checked out the profile, right? I'm not going to be like, hey, have you ever been to this exact location? Or, hey, have you ever been to insert your IP address, right? So that's how if you want to make uh, for an, a nice natural conversation, do enough research to know what questions to ask, but don't do so much research that you know the answer to every question. Does that make sense? And then Abraham, I saw you had a question. What's up? Or something to say? Yeah, something to say. The, something I do it twice. I don't do it more because lack of, of time. Mm -hmm. If I go to a profile, I see what, what they are doing, where they're spending ads and the stuff. Yeah, you record a short video, the the thing they are doing, right? And the thing they, they can should be improved is where is the holes, right? And it works. But actually the two times I I get one as customer, and another one, they the company, the company uh, how you say, uh, didn't work. They they built the company, it's a AC company, it didn't work because they have a partnership, it didn't work. So, but those two times is something it worth because they see the value because yes, yeah, and that's exactly the holes we're, there. that's exactly what we're going to cover during this month, and I'm glad you're doing that. Yeah, those those marketing audits or those um, 
I call, that's what I call them, marketing audits, personalized Loom videos. That's another thing that some people refer to them if it's not uh, within the scope of marketing. But yeah, those are really, really great. And we're going to cover those as well. But th this, right, so let's say for DMs, this would just be, and, and since you mentioned the, um, um, since you mentioned the personalized Loom videos, let me specify that these DMs are text. So yeah, I'm glad you said that. So yeah, the first thing you want to do is that problem agitation. What you can do beforehand, okay, is, and again, you have to be very careful when you're doing this, is you want to build connection ASAP. And I'm going to put optional here. So connection to ASAP would be something like, uh, and I have one of the scripts in the group where it's basically like, hey, we're connected on X, Y, Z. Like, and that's where you can do some profile research and you can basically figure out where you are connected. So for me, being a um, veteran, I'll have a lot of people who are like, oh, hey, I serve too. So boom, right away, there's a connection. Or, hey, I saw like, you know, I saw your recent father, you know, I, I just had my kid, like, you know, and I'm running a business just like you are. So right there, it's just like finding that common ground and similarities within the first message or first couple of seconds is going to build a, a, a very quick bond or at least have their ears perk up. And those connections do not have to be business oriented. So easy connection example number one is, hey, we're both in the high level community. I want to reach out because I saw you had really cool content, uh, ask you some questions, you know, blah, 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 something like that, right? So that would be like a business connection or, hey, we, you know, uh, maybe ed education. Hey, we both went to the same school. We both, you know, took the same program. We took, you know, we're in the same course, whatever, right? So those are going to help build rapport. What's cool is, again, we talked about with audience and attention is that you, you're trying to infiltrate, you know, higher tiered uh, networks or, or larger audiences. So a really cool way of doing that is actually uh, the personal side of life, not the business side of life, right? And so again, for men, this is going to be more of a, a learning curve than I've seen. I've, I've seen with uh, women, with women, they're able to build a relationship much, much more naturally, tr uh, typically, right? I'm coming off extremely prejudicial here, so bear with me. But with men, usually it's like straight to the business and they lose, ask, you know, they lose the um, consideration of the emotional side and that can kind of hurt them. So if you're doing that connection side, which again is optional, because again, you don't want to mess it up. You want to be like, I know where you live. That's very creepy. But when you're doing that connection side, find that common ground and similarities and you can kind of connect it. And so when you're using business connections, you kind of have to be at that same level or higher for them to kind of respect you. But with the personal connections, it can be something like, oh, you play pickleball, I play pickleball. Uh, you vacation here, I vacation here. You know, uh, you're in this Dungeons and Dragons community, I'm in this Dungeons and uh, Dragons or World of Warcraft or, you know, whatever community, right? So it's a matter of like finding some kind of connection or, or common ground, right? Uh, hey, I like the content you're putting out. It resonates me with, you know, really well, right? If you can't say anything else. So that's an optional point because again, you want to make sure that you're doing it right without being creepy. But also like Abraham said, like I showed you guys with some of the content uh, with the guy who messaged me today, if people take too long to get to the point, it's an immediate red flag. So again, the way I approach it, me personally, as I say, I know I'm a skeptical buyer. What would I have to say to me for me to opt in, Right. So for me to opt in, they're going to be skeptical. I need to agitate the problem very, very quickly. So whatever your industry is, and you guys can share your, your the industry you're in and the, the angle you're trying to focus on, and I can try to help you come up with some ideas on the fly. Uh, usually, again, it takes quite a while with the step one training, right? The antithetical claim creation. But I can try to help you out with some ideas. But problem agitation at the very, very simplest is like, you don't have X, Y, Z. So I'm not going to tell you you don't have it. We're going to do all of this using questions. Everything needs to be done using questions, okay? If you make a statement, it is going to come off the wrong way. It's not going to come off how you want, right? So you need to use questions, okay? Questions, questions are questions are your best friend in sales, not statements. Because it, when you're asking questions, they it will help them close, okay? So if you're saying... Somebody, somebody give me something that uh, you offer to your community or your clients or your leads. What is something you guys offer? You can type it or you can shout it. Let's say, I don't want to say websites because that's so simple. Well, apps. actually, yeah, websites and funnels. Honestly. Okay, cool. Web, so we'll do website funnels and ads, right? So websites are organic. Funnels are going to be tied to paid ads. And then Mateo said ads, right? So 
if you if they don't have a website, then you can say, ready, how can I how can I point out the fact that you don't have a website in a question, not a statement? What if I ask you for something I know you don't have? Hey, can you send me your website? If you don't have one, that's a ooh, that's a painful conversation, right? That's a that's a tough question. Oh, well, I don't have one. And that's exactly what I have in the script, right? Oh, not to be that guy, but what if I could, you know, what if I could do XYZ for you, right? Or hey, why don't you have a website? Or what's going on with a website? You know, not to be that guy, this is what I do, but you know, just curious, why don't you have a website? Somebody said, um, somebody sent me a DM and they were like, hey, this guy said he's building a website. What do I say? I said, ask him how long he's been working on it. Ask him when it'll be done. And then, so that there's a discovery. And then you can say, cool, what if I could have one up and running for you within five days? Right? So you're understanding the the problem, the full situation before you're assessing something, right? Um, funnels. Hey, uh, let's say, let's. hey, are you running ads straight to your website? Y yeah, I am. Okay, how's the conversion rate on that? If they're getting a crazy, a crazy good conversion rate, imagine how embarrassing you'd be if you were like, oh, well, you need a funnel for your ads. And they're like, uh, no, I don't. I'm at like 40% conversion. You'd be like, dang, okay, that's embarrassing, right? Because it would just show how inexperienced you are if they're actually crushing with the website. We know it's probably not the case nine out of 10 times, but that's why that's where discovery comes in. Because number one, here's where discovery comes in. Number one, you're better prepared number two are you ready for it the lead can't lie the lead can't lie if i say i can build websites and they go oh i have one i don't know if that's true or not if they're just not sharing oh i'm, I'm, I'm building it within three days they don't need it but if i go hey how long will it be until your website's built 45 days i had a client i had a client who i kid you not how much do you spend on this funnel 10k when will it be done It'll be done in three months. Three months for a funnel? Yeah, yeah. Why? I build my clients out funnels for within like two weeks at the most. It's usually a week to build and then a week of revisions. Oh, yeah. Not to be that guy, but what if we just did that for you really quick and you get your money back from them? Yeah, let's do it. Now, if I jumped the gun and said, Oh, we sell funnels, and he goes, ah, I'm gonna have my funnel. Oh, when are you gonna have it? I'll have it, I'll have it this week. They're going to say whatever they need to to get rid of me. How do I know this? Because number one, that's what I do to people, <laughs> right? That's what we do to people. We, we'll say whatever, get get you off the phone, get me off the phone. Or we'll just hang up, block you, ignore you, whatever, right? So let's look at um, ads is, is going to be a little bit harder, right? So with ads, it's going to be like, okay, you want to you wanna use some kind of research tool to figure out how much traffic they're generating, which if you are, let's say they're on Facebook, you can look at, uh, their Facebook ad campaign, and you can see, you can actually see what ads pages are running. So let's say they're not running any ads. Then you can say, oh, cool. I see you're running this type of business. Like, how are your ads performing? You see how I'm assuming they're doing something that I know they're not? Send me your website. I didn't say, do you have a website? Send me your website. I know the answer, right? Again, this is why when it comes to this outbound DMs, it's, it's almost uh, funny speaking with women because this is like the same tactics they were using. Right. Like, uh, is any, this is going to sound like so off character, but as anybody watching love is blonde, my wife is obsessed with love is blonde. Anybody's wife obsessed with love is blonde. Just me. Okay, great. So there's a whole thing right now where this girl was asking this guy all these questions about where he spent his night and he lied, 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 lied. And she knew where he was the whole time. She was just pulling out all the lies to then catch him in the lie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Was it Jeremy? I don't know if it was Jeremy or Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell my wife about this and she'll crack up. But uh, yeah, right. So so she pulled out all the questions. Look at point B. The lead can't lie. So she didn't say, oh, were you with so-and-so? We're not saying, do you have a website? We're assuming certain things within our questions to move it along the line. And then we're pulling out the answer. So we're not saying, do you have a website? We're saying, oh, can you send me your website? Ugh. We're not saying, are you running ads? We're saying, hey, um... I see you're running this business. Like, how are your ads performing? Well, I'm not running ads. Oh, now do I say, do you need ads? No, because if if I say, do you need ads? What am I assuming? I'm assuming they're not getting business and need ads. So what I say next, oh, I remember, I don't want them to lie. Do you need, ad, like, are you running ads or how are your ads running, right? Well, I'm not running ads. Oh, okay. Like, are you getting most of your content or most of your clients from SEO then? 
No. Is it word of mouth? Yeah, it's a lot of word of mouth. Oh, okay. Is that like, are you getting so much word of mouth that like things are going great? Well, it's pretty inconsistent. Oh, okay. Like, is there any reason why you're not using SEO or ads to get consistent clientele? Well, I don't, the last guy, last time I tried it, I got scammed, blah, blah, blah. And then you go into the story, right? But you have to pull that out because if you, the second you switch from questions to statements, unless they're asking for value, the second you switch from questions to statements, you've cut off the discovery process. Now you can still move into that. So you can use statements sparingly like, oh, that's not good. Or, mm, okay, I understand. I'm saying statements as like, here's what we do or here's how we fix that, right? So the minute you pivot is the minute you've cut off discovery and it's the minute that you start risking putting your foot in the mouth. So make sure your discovery is done properly, right? Uh, missed call text back feature. What is the benefit? And, and remember, we have this in the training, the five whys of how we get to the benefit of something. So like Steven, I'll ask you if, if you can, uh, you can come off mute or you can just type really fast, right? Um, what is the benefit of the missed call, missed call text back feature? MCTB. What's the benefit of that? So I'll show you guys, I'm going to do this uh, experiment with, uh, and, and somebody else can answer too. If uh, So retain leads. Okay. Why would they need to retain the lead uh, in general? Or why would they, why would they miss the call in general? Let's go that route. Why are they, why are they even missing the call? If a lead's calling, why are you not picking up your phone? On the phone with somebody else, what else? There's another scenario I'm thinking of. No service with trade guys. That's a good one. In-person customers the one I was thinking of. But look, see, this is where I like Mateo's experience because I would have not thought that one. No service with tra trade guys. So when I go to ask these questions, I can say, hey, listen, when you go to a job site and you don't have service, what do you do about the leads calling you? When you're dealing with a customer and somebody else calls you and you know that's a deal, but you know you don't want to mess this one up, how do you guys handle that? And think about how many people in the trade industry are, are owner operators, Right. One dude trying to wear 50 hats, right? Uh, what was the other one? So, uh, what do you do if you're on the phone with somebody and you're getting more people coming in? Do you have a secretary that handles that? We know the answer. The answer is no, we don't. If they had a secretary, that everything would be a way, way better, way more. Uh, we all know secretaries run the whole place most of the time. So you ask these questions that elicit pain points. That's the problem agitation. And then you dig deeper based on that. So when you're going to do your, your prospecting, you want to look for people who are checking the boxes of who you want to work with, right? So for example, if I'm looking for people who aren't running ads, I need to go to their pages. And I need to use the Facebook tool to see what ads they're running. And if they're not running it, great. And if they are running it, my script changes because now I'm not saying, oh, how are your ads? Or I could still technically say, how are your ads running? But I could take it up a notch and say, oh, who's running your ads? Like I noticed X, Y, Z, right? And this is where to tie into Abraham's earlier statement, if we're doing outreach using personalized Loom videos, what you can do is you can do a Loom video reviewing their website, their funnel, their Google business profile. You can do a, a Loom video reviewing their ads and you can be like, okay, cool. Here's the issues with the ads. Thumbnail, the scroll stopper, right? It's not called thumbnail, it's a scroll stopper, the hook, the uh, retention, the engagement, the comments, blah, blah, blah. Here's how, what we would do to fix it. Here's three tips we could do to fix it. If you want, I could we could hop on a call and I could cover more. Bam, right? So again, these are the three things that you really want to do. And then when you're digging deeper, what are we doing? We're doing the inbound lead script. What was the inbound lead script? You guys can check it out in the step uh, five process where we go into closing, which we'll cover next month. Inbound lead script is where are you currently? Where do you want to be? What's holding you back? Are you willing to spend time and money, not or time? I, in the past, I've said time and or money. I'm changing that to time and money. Time and money to fix this. All right, can you hop on a call this time or that time? When you give them two options, you increase your odds of getting on a call with them by 16%. By 16%. I'll give you the math right now. If I say, do you want to hop on a call with me? What are the two options you say? You can put them in the chat or you can come off mute. If I say yes or no, bingo. What are the odds that somebody picks yes or no? It's 50-50, right? Now, what if I said, do you want to hop on a call with me Wednesday at three or Thursday at two? What are the options now? So if I say Wednesday or Thursday, what are the options now between Wednesday and Thursday?
You guys can put it in chat or come off mute. I'm making I'm making y'all engage. There's more. Yes, exactly. So now your options are Wednesday, Thursday, and no. So now your odds are 33, 33, 33. So now if they pick yes or no, 66% odds, that's 16% higher than 50, 50, right? So giving them two options shows that you're flexible. It gives more, op more options technically. Uh, and it increases your odds. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, okay, how do I get my odds to zero and give them 10 options? That's a little too much, but just giving them two options is going to be really nice and simple. And it's going to increase your, your conversion to a call. Uh, Abraham, I saw you had your hand raised. Let me grab that, uh, your question or statement before I move on. Ah, okay. Something when you mentioned again, the, about the review for the ad and the stuff, the thing I did in, in those, in those case, it was, they was running ads, right? To, mm -hmm. to messenger. So the thing I did is I type on the messenger and I wait. When I see they never respond, my video was a, another video. They say, hey, you never didn't respond. So I yeah. see this is a problem because you are losing money yeah. if you are in ads. So I have the feature. EIE grab for right. me typing on my messenger doing the automated response. So it does when I grab the attention. Yeah. And I and I love that idea. I love that idea because it's funny that you say that. You would get along very well in the group. Let me give you his name. He does almost identical what you do. Jacob McCallum. I'm probably butchering his name. Look up look up Jacob McCallum in the group. He takes a very 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 similar approach to what you're doing uh in in terms of how he would find um ad leads uh he would even do things where he would um find people who are running ads like let's say they're in seattle and he and he he would be getting their ads and he doesn't live in seattle and he'd be like wait a minute your ads aren't localized like are you doing this yourself and then he would use that to get his foot in the door so yeah finding issues that's going on with their ads so if you're not running ads how are your how are your ads performing if they're running ads how are your ads performing or go straight into the personalized loom video like abraham said and you want to outline Hey, I tried this. It didn't work. Here's the issues going on. Here's the three things I would fix, by the way. And then what do we talk about in the in the um, marketing audit script, right? Either way, just wanted to share this content with you. Hope it helps. Uh, you know, send it over to your marketing team. That's agitating if they don't have one. Send it over to your marketing team uh, and, you know, watch the difference it makes. Pause. Or my team and I could do it for less than the rate of, don't say the number, but say like an, an example. So what I'll say is I'll say less than half the rate of a minimum wage employee. So it kind of gives them a picture. Uh, and we could do this, you know, for less than the half of a rate of a, a minimum wage employee. Either way, just want to send this over to help, right? So again, your call to action is very, very brief relative to the value, relative to the problem agitation. And again, imagine that they have a marketing team and they're doing it wrong. For me, I had a social media team and I still had people hitting me up like, Hey, your YouTube SEO is off. That pisses me off. That would piss me off. So that pissed me off so badly. Cause I'm like, wait a minute, what am I paying these guys for? If my YouTube SEO is still off, right? That's agitating. Tell your marketing team to do better. I shouldn't have to tell them to do better. Right? So that's where that problem agitation comes into play. Cause then I go, okay, well, how much can you do to fix it? Cause I really just want somebody to fix it and do it right. Right? So the problem agitation using questions and then followed by statements. So let me say, I don't want to say no statements, but I want to make sure that you're doing it in the right order. So we'll say using questions, then followed by statements. So you're not, I'm not saying you're not using any statements. I'm just saying, please, please, please do it the right way. Otherwise you're going to mess it up. Let me see. Are you teaching YouTube SEO or do you have a team? I, I will be teaching guys YouTube SEO. I will have a training on that very shortly. Uh, the long and short of it is using a tool like vidIQ. You can pay... You can pay 24, 25 bucks a month, but what I will do is I will show you exactly what metrics they look for so you can just do it on your own. Basically, your title needs to be a certain length. You need a, a description that matches the keywords, tags that match that are completely correlating with what you're doing. You need to do your chapters uh, in, in the description. You need to do your end uh, screens, your end screens. You need to do the, I forget what it's called, where you basically reference other videos in there. And then you need to make sure that... Um, when people engage with your comment, you pin a comment, you heart it, you comment. It's it's all that stuff, right? But it's very very simple. But I will I will break it all down in that content.
So yeah, digging deeper, you're better, you you're better prepared. The lead can't lie. And then you hit them with the inbound lead script, which pushes to a call. And we'll cover closing next month. If you guys have any questions until then, we can obviously cover it, right? When you're doing the marketing audit, the marketing audit is you still hitting these things in a certain way. So you're not, you're not going to be able to dig deeper too much, but that's what you're going to try to do in the call or the DMs. So the marketing audit is trying to do these. This is what the marketing audit is trying to accomplish. We'll put this in like a nice little blue. I wish I did a highlight. Does it not highlight? You know what? I'm, I think I'm pretty stupid, actually. I can just come over here and do this. Here we go. Yep. Tell you guys that army brain. So this and this become where you are trying to, um, you're putting this in your marketing audit. This training is getting super, super in-depth very quickly. I love it. So, uh, by the way, when you're doing your connection, can I type here? What's going cool? Oh, it's doing the weird, um, it's the highlighter. Let me do this. There you go. When you're doing your connection, this needs to be as short as possible. Do not lose focus of what you're trying to do. Yes, your goal is to initiate a relationship, a professional relationship. Not you're not you're not dating them. Okay. Professional relationship. So this is basically the the how to sell to them, right? Now, if you're stuck on what to sell to them, the what is going to, and I'll cover this very, very quickly. The what and the the angle you need to take with this relationship is the following. You're going to go right over here. And this is basically the uh, mentality that you're taking when it comes to the offer. You're going to start with, again, this, this is very general advice. So if you're like, why well, sell ads only? Good for you. I'll cover that in just a second. But very general approach. If you're like, I'm a beginner, what do I do? You start with a client. This is not a client relationship management software. This is a client retention model. So CRM client retention model. Anything within high level because you can pay a VA to do it overnight. Automations, forms, funnels, uh, website. You can even get away with uh, you know Google business profile optimization, a localized website. These are all things that you can pay somebody a one-time fee on Fiverr to do for you or that you can do and you can fumble your way through it. I know because my first client ever, I fumbled my way through it, didn't know anything I was doing and we made him 28K in the eighth week, okay? So if me, uh, when I say veteran, by the way, I was an in infantry veteran, okay? So it really doesn't get lower IQ than that, okay? If I as an infantry veteran in the army can fumble my way through it. I promise you, you guys can fumble your way through it. You build out your client retention model, your client acquisition model. I didn't even do client acquisition model because for the CRM, all we did was automate the review generation, try to get reviews. And then we did localized SEO for like maybe a month and it, and it lit on fire. Right. Again, there's so many factors to consider competition and keywords and yada, yada, yada. I fumbled my way through it. We made them quite a bit of money. Right. That will get your foot in the door for you then to upsell into a CAM, client acquisition model. That's where you're running your ads. You're doing a monthly SEO. You're doing monthly Google business profile posting. You're doing social media, you know, whatever your speciality is, your specialty is, that is what you're doing, okay? Do not be a jack of all trades. Master one. Now you can master angles within that. Like you can say, hey, I'm doing local traffic generation. Cool. Now that we know you're doing local traffic generation, you can say, cool, because of that, I'm doing localized SEO, localized PPC campaigns, localized Facebook retargeting ads, maybe some mailers or stickers, right? But it's all within that specific context. It's not, I help anybody market whatever they're doing, whatever wherever they're trying to go, right? Then you get, as you're getting results, because, and this is, I hear this question all the time. How do I know I'm going to get results? This is, I'm going to pick on Ismail again, because it's he's one of my favorite stories. Ismail, 5,200 MRR within a few months. He had a client. This was what held him off for the longest time. He had a client who was getting insane results. He said, well, what if I, what if I just got lucky the first time? Go get lucky a second time. But here's the fact of the matter. You didn't get lucky. You did it right the first time. Don't forget what you did and try to improve as you go. And the first time he did it, what it, he will tell you the same thing I just told you. He fumbled through it just like I fumbled through it. Because if you are increasing visibility, you are automatically going to put money in their pockets. The goal is to get better at it so you're not wasting money as you do it and you're doing it faster so you're not wasting time. 
But starting out, if you go, if you have a parent who's like, I run a local business and I'm not getting any traffic, if you just set up their Google business profile or just optimize it, that's going to create a difference. If you generate their reviews, that's going to create a difference. I promise you. That difference will put money in their pocket. And that's going to get your foot in the door. That's going to get you results. Then you can upsell to meet their demand. As you're doing it, the whole process, you're gathering results and you're integrating it. And you're not waiting. You're not waiting. So for Ismail, he was like, oh, I think this guy's going to make more money. That's cool. Get a case study. You can always ask him for another case study down the road if you're making as much money as you as we see you're making him, right? If you have a good working relationship, they have no problem hopping on a 15-minute Zoom meeting. So again, I'm not trying to focus too, too much on this offer because that we can, you know, it gets very hairy very quickly with how much different angles you guys have and different industries. And I, I'll open up for any questions in the last 15 minutes or so. But this is essentially the process. Uh, and I can give you some, I can give you some one-liners if you're stuck, but the end goal, just to, just to wrap up my train of thought and to see what questions you guys have. The end goal is outreach should initiate a relationship. I do not care what that outreach looks like as long as you are initiating and sustaining a positive professional relationship. Ismail does it through friend requests. Grant is testing his DMs. Um, the way I do it is I just do content engagement. I don't even do direct DMs. I just do content engagement or um, group engagement with uh, communities, right? It looks different based on the industry. So where's your industry operating? What is the best way to get a hold of them? And that's going to, this is all depending on the uh, the industry. So I know I covered a ton of information. I'm trying to leave this up so you guys can take screenshots. I am recording the call. I will put it on YouTube so you guys can review it. Ton, a ton, a ton of value here. So I'm really happy that you guys asked the questions you asked. Let me uh, stop yapping for two minutes and see what questions you all have in the last couple of uh, minutes we have here. Well, let me ask this. Any questions on, on this topic? Yes, I kind of struggle with that intro message, like, not being, uh, I guess not being too business, too business, but also not too personal. Like, do you have any recommendations on what we could say to get just like more of an open start, open conversation starter? Yeah. Here's my personal favorite one. If you are, and I'm not trying to assume anything about you, but usually when people have this issue, it's not so much a fear of rejection, but it's more so uh, exhaustion from not knowing what works. And I'm not trying to speak for you, but usually that's when people ask that question, it's usually like, I don't know what, what works. I'm, I'm trying, I'm tired of messing it up. Um, what I like to do in that situation is just do a check-in, especially if it's somebody within a community that you already have, just do a check-in. Like, hey, last we spoke, uh, you know, this is what's going on. How are you currently doing? Or, hey, I saw you're in my community. I wanted to personally reach out to you. Just check in and see how business was going, right? And what you're doing is there's that connection, because you're saying, hey, I see you're in my community. Just wanted to reach out and see how you're doing. So I see you're in my community. I see you're in this group. There's a connection. Wanted to see how everything, how's everything going in business, right? And people are going to respond initially with, oh, it's going well. Somebody could have, you know, you have you have two types of people in this world when it comes to how are you doing. 95% of people are going to, are they're going to say, I'm fine, right? Oh, this is good. 5% of people are going to just immediately trauma dump on you, right? Most of us know, like, if somebody says, how you're doing, don't actually tell them how you're doing, right? That's like a, <laughs> uh, I'm not saying you guys change that, but I'm saying usually, like, that's how you're raised, right? Don't tell them your problems, make it look nice. So you kind of have to do a little digging. Um, some people will just immediately start trauma dumping on you and they've never met you before, right? Like, you're at the grocery store, like, oh, hey, what's up? And they're like, my my dog died. And you're like, oh. <laughs> you're like, I don't even know this person. You're like, what is going on, right? But 95% of the time, they're going to they're gonna feign like everything, like a feign happiness or feign like, you know, complacency or, you know, whatever the case may be, right? So you can start asking specific questions because people might lie about the general, but the minute you start pulling at the specific is that's how you're trying to find a thread to pull, right? So you could say like, oh, like, I saw you. I'm, I'm trying to use an example I think would apply to you, but like someone in your community that maybe you haven't DM'd directly. Hey, I know you're in my community, seen you a few times, yada, yada, yada. Wanted to reach out and see how your business is doing. Oh, it's doing great. Okay. Like, you know, walk me through like, 
uh, the industry you're in, the offer you're doing. Okay, we do this and this. Okay, and how how are your lead generation? Lead generation is crazy. We're so swamped. That's awesome. Uh, you, I know you said you're swamped. Like, do you guys have? I'm assuming you have like operations or systems put in place. That's something that I'm really trying to work on. Like, I'm not as organized as I want to be. Boom. Now we've identified the problem, right? Because if you were to go in there and be like, I'm going to try to generate more leads. And they're like, like, I had a guy messaged me today. I'm going to try to generate more leads. I'm like, bro, I don't need leads. <laughs> like, we, we, we're, I'm cooking right now. I'm good, right? And that immediately tells me he's a bad salesman, which probably tells me he's not good at closing, which probably tells me he's probably not good at what he's doing, right? Now, I might, that might have been a very quick, slippery slope for some of you to, to witness, but that's literally how my brain operates when people message me. I'm so psychoanalyzing, uh, maybe to a fault, but that's how fast my thought process goes with that. So for you, start. That's what I would look like. I would look at like, hey, you're in my community connection. Just checking in, seeing how, uh, you know, this this year I wanted to start checking in with my people and seeing, you know, how you're doing on things, and start pulling at threads and see what you can find. And then yeah, whatever the problem kind of thing that works in my favor is that I have a group, so I do use that a lot. But yeah. I was thinking more like if I move to Instagram because my beauty account that's really mm -hmm. on Instagram. So I was kind of like, how do I even approach them? You know. So if you're moving to Instagram and let's say you are focusing on working with the the salons themselves, that's where you would come back to this, where with Instagram, it's it's going to be, and Instagram is going to be very good for the esthetician or anything uh, aesthetic, right? Uh, so that's, a you know, hair, hair, wigs, extensions, uh, eyebrows, nails, um, threading, you know, facials, dermatology, anything within that space is going to do really nice on Instagram because it's a very visual, right? She looked bad. Now she looked good, <laughs> right? That's kind of like what you're trying to do. Like hair was messed up, hair looking good. Nails were looking like a dog chewed them off. Now she's, you know, we got her straight. So in that space, that's where you want to have your profile optimized. So you want to have a color scheme that you have in all of your pictures. You have pictures, pro, uh, videos, stories. You have your little uh, story collections uh, right above your post. You have maybe a few YouTube videos put on IGTV, you know, whatever the case may be. Then as you're doing and your, your bio needs to be optimized. Right. So like I took, uh, you know, like industry, I work with this individual. And then what I would do if I were you is I would have a YouTube video that pushes to your results. And the first YouTube video I'd make, if I were you is a long form content, which you can see the training on, but I have a long, a long form content. Uh, I wouldn't, you can watch the main training I had for the, the video lead magnets, but for you, I would go to the, um, eight step VSL training. I'd have a VSL on how you scaled your own business. Cause you have a cool story. And then I would have in my bio, how I scaled my blank industry from X to Y in Z timeline, and then an arrow to your YouTube video. That's okay. exactly what I would do. And then when you go to engage them, they're going to see that you're all about the, you know, uh, that space and you have the profile, the bio, the everything is optimized for that. Okay, that's thank what, you. That's, that's what I do for IG. And then anybody who follows you, so anybody who starts following you based off content, this is really big for IG, okay? They follow you based on content. You're going to immediately message them and you can have automations that do this. You're going to immediately message them and you're going to say, hey, thanks for the follow. Can't tell you how much that means to me. Do you mind if I ask you what piece of content caught your eye? Or do you mind if I ask you what piece of content that you liked that, that caused you to follow me, Right. They're going to tell you the piece of content that resonated with you or with them. And if you're making problem agitating content within your niche, then that's going to tell you what problem they're having in their business. Oh, I love your piece of content on how to get local leads for uh, lashes. Waxing. I know I'm like butchering the industry, but like I'm just trying to keep it within the esthetician space for anybody who may watch it later. And then, and like, oh, okay. So what does that tell you that for that individual's problem is? Lead generation. Oh, I loved your piece of content on automations that uh, basically help with booking clients because, you know, we have a small salon and it's really nice having that and not having to leave the clients and that makes your day go longer and then better, you know, bad experience, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay, cool. Operations, automated closing, AI bots, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's the IG is going to be centered on that. And I'm actually moving to IG from Facebook. So Facebook, what's nice with IG, if you set up your business suite, whatever you post on IG will automatically post to your Facebook, not the other way around. So I'm moving over to IG as my focus, and then I'll do my Facebook engagement, but then all my posts will be from IG. So that will not only try to get people over, but then I'll use IG for their reels and IGTV will be where I start posting some YouTube videos as well. So ho hopefully that helps a little bit.
That definitely helps. Thank you. Now to create the content is my issue. And so with content creation for you, because I see some of your content and it's, it's really good stuff for you. I would want to say, and I'm learning short from content creation as well. Uh, for you, I would say more cuts if you can. So like as soon as you're done with the sentence, cut it. And then, so there's like zero space in between. If you can add a B-roll over every sentence you say, whether it's B-roll of you, you with clients, whatever, if you can. And then in your scripting, your hook is good. I would want your hook to be specific. Like who are you speaking to? And so this is something I was talking with my content guy earlier today. And he's, he's, um, he's in our community, Imram. He's helping me with content and it's going so much better since I've been working with him. And so some of the stuff that we found is like, um, when you're trying to talk to to an avatar or an industry, I don't want you to talk to like star. What's your, what's the industry you're trying to target right now? Beauty, is it beauty salon owners? That I will be targeting on Instagram. Yes. Right now I'm just selling something one off just to bring yeah, yeah. it. To cash. So, so for the beauty salon, I don't want you to talk to beauty salon owners. Give me the name of a beauty salon owner that you've worked with in the past. It can be just his or her first name, but give me the name of somebody you've worked with in the past that was asking you for advice that you gave advice to. Jennifer. When every piece of content you make, I want you to talk to Jennifer. That will make creating content so much easier. So much easier. Because if you go all beauty salon owners and then it's like, we well, got to get the whole, no. I want you to think when you say, if hey, you run a beauty salon, I want you to think you are speaking to Jennifer specifically. Like Mateo, I want you to think that you are speaking to the boss of the company you work for for HVAC. What would you say to him right now to help him scale? That is going to make your avatar so much easier. That's why. So like people will tell you online all this like advice that they just water down and recycle. And I'm trying to make this as applicable as possible. So when people tell you create an avatar and talk to that avatar, when they tell you, I've seen this before, they'll say, give the avatar a name and an age and hobbies. Scratch all that. Think of somebody in that industry, that's who you're speaking to. And now you know their name, you know their age, you know everything because they're an actual person that you can actually speak to. And this is why when you're starting out, it's so nice to speak to somebody who, if you have family members in that business, that's a huge advantage because you don't have to go, hmm, hypothetically, no, dad, mom, brother, cousin, aunt, uncle, you know, stepbrother, uh, sister-in-law, tell me exactly what's going on in this business. And you can pass with them and bother them and their families. So they got to put up with you, right? Take advantage of a uh, nepotism, 2024 slogan. So yeah, I want you to actually think of somebody in that space. So for Imram, he was like, how do I make content? And he's he's such a good coach. But if you guys know anything when it comes to coaching, coaching yourself is the hardest person to coach because you're stuck in your head all day long. So he was like, how do I make content? And I'm like, bro, talk to me when you make that content because I'm so bad at content and you've been helping me so much more lately. And he's like, oh, okay. So when he makes the piece of content, he's he's thinking, I'm talking to Alec. And his first video got like over 700 views and comments and engagement and likes. He's like, bro, I didn't think it'd be to do well this first time. And he's he he's taking accounts very, very high. I'm talking like hundreds, thousands, millions. But for his own brand, it's it's a different game. And I know, I'm sorry, I know you can resonate with that because you're in the coaching space too. Yeah. Any any other questions or comments or anything when it comes to uh how to sell to local service-based businesses specifically. And that, that can include realtors if you're in the realty space. All right, let me go ahead and um, stop the recording and then we'll see if you guys have any questions just in general.